And to my left here is Kyle Fox, and he's the director of Public Works. And we also have um, Doug Brody here. He's our um, team. He's from Meridian. He's actually doing the design for this project. So we're here mainly tonight to listen to everybody, to get your thoughts and your input on this project um, and before we go forward with the final design on it. So we'll take all of your thoughts at the end of the night, and we'll work on them and put them all together and produce a plan. So I have a few slides describing the project, and then it will be up to you to put your input. So next. Our focus tonight um, is on this area here that I've highlighted in yellow. Uh, we have Babusik Lake. We could do it with that. OK. We have Babusik Lake that runs east to west along the middle of the page. And Turkey Hill comes in from the south. We have Joppa Hill just to the west of the intersection. And then Glenwood Ave is also within that area. Let me do the next. So we have the existing conditions today. It's a very um, Y-type intersection. So it's difficult as you're driving up for sight distance on Turkey Hill. You have to turn your head all the way back around and try to see the cars. And there's some people that have difficulty being able to turn that much. And also, you've got uh, sight distance issues on Babusik Lake Road. So coming from the east, going west, you've got in that curve, it's very difficult if you want to try to make that left-hand turn onto Turkey Hill. The, between the curve and the fence and the trees, it's difficult to see who's coming down Babusik Lake Road. Um, from the west, it's not the sight distance isn't, isn't as bad. Plus, you've got a lot of different movements in that area, um, but the resulting is a great good number of accidents that have occurred. So from 2005 to the beginning of 2012, there were 13 accidents, 10 of which had a property injury, uh, property damage, and two with personal injuries. Most of those were due to driver error. So there was only one weather-related accident at that time. Since 2012, so this last seven years, there have been 20 accidents. So the accidents are increasing in frequency. So you've had 19 property damages and one personal injury. Uh, so it's a total of 33 accidents at this intersection. Um, the, uh, the, we have not, luckily, had a fatality. And that's what we want to try to avoid in this area. So right now, this is the way the design stands. And the green areas are going to be turned into grass. A lot of that area is pavement today, so we would be creating some drainage um, conditions to help um, treat the drainage that we need to do under the MS4 program. Um, this roundabout that we have shown here tonight is 120 feet in diameter. So that will take all of the cars um, and trucks and buses going around that inside the uh, inner or the outer circle. The inner circle, which is made usually of cobblestone, ours is going to be of a, a concrete, uh, is for the larger vehicles should they need to be able to. So the curbs are, they can rise up and go around them in that, in that area. Um, that's for the bigger trucks, which are occasionally through here, but they're not our main um, vehicles that come through. So it will handle the fire truck, the ladder truck. Um, that can be able to go around on the regular, on the pavement. What this does is it brings all of the intersections, all of the roads in at about the same angle, and going around the cul-de-sac will then, or around the uh, roundabout, sorry, um, <laughs> it, they, everybody will be at the same speed. And that's the goal, is that nobody can be speeding through there, which is another cause of the accidents that occur through there. Um, so it's used. Why are roundabouts used? They're used for traffic calming. It slows the traffic down. It improves the sight distance, in this case, for all the directions. It creates a safer intersection. Um, so the impacts that we have now are more like T-bones. And 
this will cause a lower impact, so they're usually from behind, so they're not as bad, plus you're going at a slower speed. We all, everybody will enter at the same angle. Uh, this is very similar to the roundabout that is in Bedford at the Meeting House Road. They had four roads coming together, and I don't know if you remember in the years past, but it was very difficult to get through that intersection. And today, if you drive that roundabout, it's fairly easy and smooth. That's what this one will be more closely aligned to. Um, and I've been told that this is the entry to the town center. So this will define the town center. Um, the steps we are going to take moving forward. So tonight's meeting, like I said, is for your meeting to listen to your input. Um, we want to hear your opinions, uh, your thoughts. We will take all of this input and then we'll make the design improvements to this design. We will optimize the geometry going through it to make sure everybody goes through. We'll balance the speeds to make sure the speeds all are correct as they're going around. And then the next phase would be the construction phase. We're targeting this year uh, towards the end of the year, but it's, it might be spring of 2021. Things that contribute to that. Our main issue is going to be the tree cutting and the uh, utilities that need to be moved because there are major trunk lines through there for the communications and those all have to be moved and we can do nothing until those are moved. So that's always been our, our hang up uh, for these projects, unfortunately. Um, but we've already put our orders in, so we're hoping that we can get through, um, and hopefully it can be this year, but that's something that's a little bit out of our control. One more. So now is your, your time. Um, we're here to listen to you. Um, we can answer a few questions if, if you have, but most of it's just listening to what you have to say, and then we'll take it back and evaluate everything. Um, after the meeting, Kyle and I will be here and we'll be at one or we'll each be at one of the uh, plans and we can talk one on one if you had specific questions or concerns about your lot or you know something about the project. We can deal with you one on one if you don't want to talk to the whole group too. And um, that's all I have to say for the moment and one more and then they, they can see the yep plan up okay and there's a mic up here oh there's also a sign-in sheet for those that have not signed in before you leave if you could please sign up on the table that would be wonderful and please state your name and your street or where you're from and um, so we can record all of this and we can get it down hi my name's Joe Castronovo I live at 99 Babusik Lake Road right on the corner um, of the intersection of Babusik and Glenwood, um, kind of directly affected. Um, I have a problem with this being turned into a one-way. Um, with this being a one-way, I'm going to be going down the road towards my driveway, and people are going to be coming into the road anticipating a one-way road, and I'm going to be going head on with them, almost playing like a game of chicken, trying to get into my driveway. I think that um, Glenwood Lane should be blocked off and dead-ended. Um, there's a lot of kids in that neighborhood, including my children, and with people coming around that corner, they can go right down and take that corner thinking that it's just a one-way, and there's kids out there all the time playing basketball, um, football with a ball in the street um, I just think it with this this turn here it's definitely making a dangerous condition for for the kids and for traffic um, on that road um, I also see that um, for people trying to avoid this intersection will try and use that as a cut through to Joppa um, it's an easy cut through right to Joppa and pretty much those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. 
I am uh, Harvey Bloom from 3 Evergreen Drive. And I was wondering if there are other uh, alternatives that were considered, such as the adaptive uh, traffic lights that are radar detected, uh, machine learning type of stuff. Uh, they use them in Denmark and uh, Germany, I know. And basically it looks ahead, sees what the traffic is, gives somebody an indication whether to slow down, stop, or whatever, and to allow the free flow of traffic. So I don't know if that was a consideration as well. But uh, I, would, I would like to think that uh, we could e consider other things such as that. Thanks. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Dembo. I live at 15 Joppa Road, right on the corner of Joppa and Babusik. Um, <clears throat> it sounds to me from what I'm hearing that this is a foregone conclusion, that this is the result that's going to be from your description of having orders placed and expecting perhaps to have this work done possibly by the end of the year or maybe in the spring of next year. So it sounds to me like this is what we're going to get. Um, I'm sure that uh, I'm not the only one who feels that this um, might not be the best solution, at least from our position or from those who feel the way I do. Personally, I have to admit that I have um, felt in the past that uh, roundabouts have been uh, a great way to get people to slow down and pay attention and look at each other. Uh, in the places where I have used them, out uh, one-on-one in the before, uh, Peterborough, before Peterborough area, uh, in, in uh, Nashua by the high school, um, the spot in Bedford that you, was, you were just uh, referencing before. Yes, they, they seem to me to, to be effective. Um, in this situation here, I'm wondering whether we have another option, and that might be possibly to take some of the town-owned land that is in that triangle and make a definitive left turn and have come out at a T intersection onto Babusik Lake Road and have a stop sign. Um, I don't know from an engineering standpoint whether that's uh, possible. I, I don't know why it would not be. Um, I'm not sure what the impact would be, positive or negative to that. But I think from uh, a standpoint of economics, if that is part of the equation of what you're considering, it might be a lot less costly to do that and might yield the same effect of um, of having people, whether it, whether it's a, a blinking light or something that would be more, I'm not, I'm not suggesting a traffic light. I can't imagine what that would do unless uh, Harvey's solution of some sort of a highly engineered mechanized uh, intelligence system were to be employed. Um, I'm just wondering whether that was ever part of your consideration. And uh, that's my commentary. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I guess I'll, I'll address that question and Mr. Bloom's question. Um, so this project has been in our in the town's capital improvement program since back as early as 2012. So this isn't a new project for us. We've been working on this for a number of years. And those of you familiar with the capital improvement program um, will understand that the way the process works is um, we'll, we'll submit a, a project to the town manager and then to the town council in the capital improvement program um, with the idea of a project that should be done. As the details go through, um, the project gets a little more refined and, and it keeps, ideally it keeps moving up each year in the program and it's a seven year program. Um, in this case, this one took um, about the full seven years and, and we're, we're here. So through that process, what we did, we did evaluate two alternatives. Uh, the first was the T intersection, kind of the sweeping curve like you see on the other side of Joppa Road where it comes in. And then the second alternative was the roundabout. And what we did, we hired Meridian to develop two, both concepts to about the 30% design stage. We're trying to be economic minded so we get it to that stage, so we'd have a really good sense of what the cost would be for each of the projects, what the benefits would be, what the, what the issues were with each of the two concepts. In the end, the, uh, we brought it to council. 
we had a great discussion at the uh, the town council and the decision was made to go forward with the roundabout now why is the roundabout better than the t intersection there's a number of reasons uh, first and foremost it does slow traffic down um, you saw the slide Don put up in the last seven years we've had 20 accidents the previous seven years there were 30 accidents are increasing everyone's driving faster around town and we have more people driving in town and that trend is going to continue it seems um, so re reducing speed the traffic common component of the roundabout is is a big factor the other factor is when there are accidents as don mentioned they're less severe the the kind of accidents you get are, are slow rear end bumps or glancing blows with the T intersection, you still have the capability of getting the, the T bone, uh, particularly in this in this configuration where, if you're heading west on Babusik, you've still got to make that left turn, and as a car is coming east on Babusik, they're still coming at a pretty good clip, and that's the movement that that really scares us. Um, the economics, uh, the roundabout was about three times the cost of the uh, T intersection uh, but we all thought it was it was worth it in the long run it'll handle more traffic it'll handle it more efficiently uh, it's a long-term design so we're trying to think in the long term rather than short term with respect to traffic signals or a kind of signalized system we didn't really consider that um, due to the cost of those systems the traffic signal systems have a huge upfront capital cost and they'll never put traffic through the intersection as quick as a roundabout would. Uh, Steve Dembo, 15 Joppa Road. Um, how do you anticipate the snow removal process to be either impeded by this, which I can see very possibly would be a problem? I mean, how do you go around and around, and where do you? Where do you put the snow, and how do you get off that merry-go-round? Um, so that's like I'm just thinking that that might yeah. be a, a bit of an issue. Yeah, as you might expect, some of our highway folks aren't thrilled at this concept. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it'll, there'll be a learning curve, but there are there are dozens of these in New Hampshire now, and and the other northern states. Um, one, once we learn how to do it, we fully expect it'll it'll operate just fine. Christine Lina, and I'm at 8 Glenwood Lane, so I'm at the opposite end of Glenwood. Um, like Joe, I have concerns with traffic running through the neighborhood, um, specifically with the notation of the making that a one-way in. Um, to me, that's sort of like a, everybody come this way, <laughs> it's way faster than this roundabout. Um, I think Joe's idea of making it, dead-ending it is a great start, um, but it is commonly um, shady to Evergreen to Glenwood is also a pretty significant cut through. We see it a lot on dump days. Um, and my fear is that that isn't the end of the solution. So if that is something that's in consideration, then I think a second thought to that cut through of Shady, Evergreen, Glenwood is also, people are gonna be coming through there to circumvent that roundabout to get to Joppa. Great, thank you. And we are a family neighborhood. Like Joe, we have kids, there's families walking, people come down from what is that across the, um, I've lost right across Tanglewood, thank you, <laughs> um, into this neighborhood to walk their dogs. There's families out all the time. So it's a foot traffic is very heavy in the neighborhood and that's a real safety concern. Yeah, thank you. That, that is something that um, Joe had brought up to us and we're, we're still giving it some thought and seeing what we can do. One of the biggest reasons that, that we hesitate to do that is the snow removal um, making it a one-way the plow trucks would have to plow all the way down glenwood and then back up come down again and back up and from a highway driver experience most of our accidents are backing accidents because you just can't see behind those trucks and it's amazing what cars will do they'll creep up right behind our trucks and we just can't see them so that, that's our big hesitation to closing it off fully. 
without having a proper cul-de-sac at the end. Any other questions? Yeah, Alistair. Yeah, Tom Mayo, 5 Glenwood Lane. Um, I'm going to speak to the fire department right now. How do you feel about this? If you don't feel that you need that making Glenwood a dead end, right, would you consider putting a gate there that can only be accessed by the town, an emergency vehicle, and no one else? Because we don't want people going through there. There's far too many small children in there, and you know what's going to happen. That rotary is going to become a nightmare for everybody because they don't want to slow down and get delayed going home. They don't want to get stuck behind the 35 or 40 school buses going around this at four different times per day. You know, think about it, right? It's bad enough to go up Babusik Lake Road when they're all leaving the school and going up to the other school to pick everybody up. It's an endless chain of them. Now you're going to slow that down even further. So people are going to get irritated. They're going to get rude. Drive on one of these things in Boston, right? It's Russian roulette. It really is. You know, everybody's on it. Everybody's in a hurry. Nobody's courteous. Nobody lets anybody get it in, right? So from the fire department standpoint, from the DPW standpoint, would you consider putting a gate there that you have access to to get through? If you want to plow it, you open the gate, you plow it. Shut the gate. The fire apparatus wants to get through, push a button, the gate opens, you go in, right? You've got to protect the people in the neighborhood because what you're doing is you, you are absolutely altering our lives by this traffic pattern. And I don't like it, right? It's not right. You know, this is the first I've heard of it. You know, have you considered making Turkey Hill Road a right turn only exit? Have you considered making Turkey Hill Road from Babusik Lake going east only a right turn so that you can only go down Turkey Hill Road and eliminating the fact that anybody can take a left turn there because that's the biggest problem. It's not the people going right. It's the people that want to go into Glenwood Lane because it's easy to do it. It's the people that want to go left on the Turkey Hill Road. That's the biggest problem. Thank you. I can address the, uh, the gate part. Um, being a public road, we're not allowed to actually put gates on it. All, the, the town's public roads are called Class 5 roads. We're not allowed to put gates or bars or anything on public roads. So that, that isn't an option. The other items you brought up, we'll certainly look into. Uh, my name is Alan Tomlinson at uh, 2 Glenwood Lane. And I concur with my neighbors that have spoken so far that uh, I'd rather see a dead end there of some kind than have that on my street. Uh, especially for the safety of the the children. So, thank you. Good evening. My name is Veronica Giraldi. I'm at Nine Glenwood Lane, and I would just like to voice my concerns about the safety of the children in our neighborhood as well and our street. I live on the end of Glenwood and Joppa, on the other end, across from the Linus family. And I'm also concerned about our neighborhood becoming a cut through. Um, our children play on that road all the way to the other end of Babusik. Um, they ride their bikes, and on several occasions we've had to tell, you know, some drivers to slow down, and I'm worried about more traffic coming through there and people using it as a cut through. So if there's any alternative that you can seek, I would like those um, taking a look at before we finalize this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Questions?
includes our meeting for tonight. Thank you all for coming and really appreciate all your input and we will take it into consideration. Thank you everybody.